is the presence of God in this place.
cover this place with your holy blood in Jesus name and Lord every oh Father God um, every sin that you have seen in us Father God Lord take it away Father in Jesus name make us, make us righteous in your sight and Lord as I deliver your word Father God let your only word be heard make me an instrument of Father God Make me a channel of blessing, O oh Lord, to these people. And as deliver your presence, your word, your very word, your true message, Lord. Touch every heart, every mind that is here, O oh Lord. Let your will be done, and let your glory shine upon us. Thank you, O oh Lord, and we give back all the praises and adoration unto you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Good afternoon, everybody. Okay, so oh yeah. So um before I start, I just want to um to show you a video. Uh this is just uh, a clip from Lifestyle of Rich and Famous. So let's see how a rich and a famous guy um, live every day. Take note every day. Yeah, boyfriend could also. <laughs>
Dada. May mili lang ako sa sakyan. Makikita ko sa living room. And then I will just press what car I, I want. And then I will just drive. Who wants like that? Who wants like that? <laughs> ako lang? Amen. Amen. Ha? Nahiya ko. Who wants to have like that? Amen. The, the cars, the... Um, what do you want? Uh, what do you call them? Uh, the condo unit. Yeah. But I will, I, tonight, uh, today I will just tell you a secret how to be prosperous and successful. How to be like that. Gusto nyo ba yun? Kayo nyo na tayo. Kaya nila tayo pansin nyo. Turn your Bible in Joshua 1.8. Just a one verse. Everybody, just one one day. Just one one eight. It says, "Do not let this book of law depart from your mouth. Meditate on it day and night." so that you may be careful to do everything written on it, then you will be prosperous and successful. If you have your Bible with you, can you underline the book of law? And then encircle the meditate on it day and night. And encircle prosperous and successful. Just one verse. You know this? This uh, chapter, it is Moses died already, and they are going to enter into Promised Land. And the prophet said uh, said to Joshua, "Keep this book of law. The book of law is the commandment that um, God gave to Moses. And nowadays we call this the Bible. And it says, meditate on it." day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written on it and there is a promise what is the promise then you will be prosperous and successful first what is meditation meditation is a God's word as devotion Sino rito yung nakapag-beginner's class? Beginner's, yes, beginner's class. What is devotion? Oh. <laughs> no? Do <Do'yon? laughs> Devotions are quiet time, right? Time to reflect, to confess our sin, to examine the word that we read, and we worship the Lord. You are devoting your time if you read God's Word, if you reflect God's Word. To make it simple, meditation is like Oreo. You know Oreo cookies? Oreo cookies? You know, last night, I was, um, there, it was a short notice. Now, I will stand here. So I don't know really what, what to say. I really don't want to. Um, to deliver. And then there's Eurovision. So I go, no, 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 And I was eating Oreo. I like Oreo. And then God spoke to me through Oreo. Diba? Ganda. <clears throat> Meditation is like Oreo. Why? Oreo stands for O, open the Bible. I like what Pastor Mimi said before. She said that it's better for you to have your Bible not in your phone or in tablet. Because before you go to Bible app, you will read first notification from Facebook, Twitter, WhatsApp, WeChat, Groupon, Skype, everything. And then before you know it, you spend one hour and then you need to go to work. 
And then, there, what, do, what we should do? We will just read the Bible. Okay. Uh, okay, the Lord. Thank you, Lord, for this day. Amen. Bless me. Amen. You spend one hour from your Facebook. It is not, there is nothing wrong to be Asian, to have a Bible, physical Bible. You know, you make notes on it, you underline your circle. You know, this Bible that I have. And to me. I have notes, I have circular, I have underlined it. Whenever I open the Bible, I know that I read that. But God has something new for me. And then letter R. It says, read your Bible. Part of your devotion or meditation is to read at least two chapters in the Bible. That's a recommendation. You know why? Because Bible is a, is a um, combination of books. It's like a novel. Na parts. And if you just read a chapter or verse, you will not understand it. You will not understand the story behind it, the background, who wrote that. If you read like two, at least two chapters, you have a better understanding of what it really means. Example. Can you open the Bible, your Bible, in 2 Timothy 1.7? 2 Timothy. one seven. Yung walang Bible. Bigyan ko kaya ng file na walang Bible mo. Mayaman ako ngayon. Okay. 2 Timothy 1.7. It says, for God did not give us a spirit of timidity, but a spirit of power, of love, and of self-discipline. In, in other translation, it says, For God did not give us a spirit of fear. You know, this verse is often misinterpreted. A few weeks ago, I just... Um, took this verse like the ordinary Christian when they said that na God doesn't give us fear so what should we do? Go! Mag skydiving ka bungee jumping do not fear but no this book is written by Timothy and that letter is from Paul Timothy is the youngest and inexperienced pastor that day, that, that moment. And Paul wants to encourage him in serving the Lord. So when you say that God did not give us the spirit of fear, it doesn't mean that go, you only live once, travel the world, Don't, do not fear, no. It says here that when you are in the ministry, do not fear, do not hide the faith that you have. See, if you're not reading, see the, the title, in the, the title in, the, in that chapter is encouragement to be faithful. But we, if we just took out one verse and not reading the whole chapter, we will not understand. We will misinterpret. That's what I mean. So in, I encourage you to read at least two chapters. For you to be, to have a better understanding. It's not like a fortune cookie. Like what I uh, uh, said a uh, few or many times. You will not get fortune cookie open. Oh, ito pala horoscope ko. No. Sabi sa hula. It's not a fortune cookie. Letter A. It says, every day. You know, before I came here, I was working, uh, before I came here in Denmark, I was working full-time in the morning, and then in the evening, I'm studying. So my time is 7 o'clock in the morning to 3 p.m. And then 5 p.m., I go to law school. And then once, I had a final exams. So 7 o'clock, before I start my, uh, my work, I grab my Bible and read. And then may, Mr. Serong, ano, uh, co-office mate, colleague, 
He went to me and said, Oh, you're reading a Bible. Exam mono. <laughs> I felt so bad. Because it's just... I'm only getting a Bible, read it, whenever I need it. Kapag kailangan ko lang ba? It says, every day. Siguro, my colleague just saw me. Or maybe, siguro talaga. <laughs> Finals. So... I grab my Bible as if there's an answer on it. Mamaya ma-answer ko na yung mga exams ko. But, it says every day. Like we always say here, we're not endorsing new religion, but relationship. Why we read Bible every day? It builds relationship with the Lord. This is His word. This is his love letter to you. And you will not um, you will not know him better if you are not reading your Bible. Who is God to you? For me, he is my comforter. He is my healer. He is my provider. The Bible makes us wise from personal relationship to handling your personal finances. And when we are wiser, we make decisions better. And when we have a better decision, good things came. Right? Oh, it says, obey what it says. In John, in James 1, 22 to 25, please open your Bible. Bible hunting time. James. Malapit sa? James 1, 22 to 25. Okay, it says, Do not merely listen to the word, and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word, but does not do what it says, is like someone who looks at his face in a mirror, and after looking at himself, goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. But whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom, and continues in it, not forgetting what they have heard, but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. It says, not just merely hearing, not just merely hearing, writing the word of the Lord in circling or making a notes. It says, do it. And there's a promise, if you do it, after you hear it, after you do it, then you will be blessed in every, in every aspect that you do. Obedience. One of the benefits of meditation is to help us to be obedient to God's word. When we go back to Joshua 1a, it says there, so that you may be careful to do everything written on it. If you're med meditating the Word of God and the Word is constantly on your mind and your mouth, it will keep you from sin. You know, merong NSS. Tama ba ako? A while ago, while we're um, uh, fixing the chairs and everything, we're singing. <laughs> we're singing glowing. <laughs> Everyone is singing. You know, na-memorize na namin. That is NSS. And if we read the Bible every day, and for example, have a vacuum, I can do all things through Christ who give me strength. I can do all things who give me. You know, you will reflect on that every minute, every second of your life. And when you are in a position that you cannot do anything, that you are helpless. 
Suddenly, Mara reminds me, oh, I can do all things to give him strength. Right? Are you not really um, amazed to the people that every time they open their mouth, verses, Bible verses, lahat na lang ata, may sagot, Bible verses. Kapag nag-pray, Bible verses. Why? Because they meditate the Word day and night. It's okay, and it's really good, and they're so blessed. If you're um, saying Bible verses, then bad words, right? Then negative words. Hindi ko kaya to, hindi ko kaya. Ayoko na, ayoko na. Right? And let me clarify this. Jesus hates the sin, but loves the sinner. If we meditate the word, we will keep ourselves from sinning. Lahat tayo nakakasala. Sino rito hindi? Ipako sa krus. <laughs> Everyone. It says in Romans 3.23, All men have seen and fall short of the glory of God. But if we meditate our the word of God, we will keep on from sinning. And you know, partial obedience is disobedient. And disobedient is a sin. In Psalms 119, verse 9, it says, How can a young person stay pure? By obeying your word. Do you want to walk righteous in your life? Obey, your, obey the word of the Lord. And if you meditate the word of God, then the lies of the enemy will not affect on us. You know the story of Jesus tempted in wilderness? Jesus, it is in Matthew 4. And Jesus was um, fasting for 40 days and 40 nights. Imagine, I want 21 days, nagreklamo tayo. Siya 40 days. And then Satan came to him. And he said, Oh, you want a son of God? If you're really a son of God, you will turn this rock into bread. But what Jesus said, Man does not live in bread alone, but also in the rice, in the gospel of the Lord. Right? And it says, and he took Jesus in the highest point. And he says, if you're really a son of God, jump on, jump, and then the, the angels will catch you. Satan quoted a verse, a Bible verse. Even Satan knows the Bible verses. Again, politiko, even Satan knows the Bible and the Bible verses. Ikaw. Ita na alam mo. Isa, Jesus Web, yung pinakamagod mo. O kaya, John 3.16. Satan quoted Bible verses. And also, Jesus, sumasagot siya, he answered back with Bible verses also. So what if Satan gives you some problem? Ang bigti na tayo. <laughs> Tabi na mga ayaks. <laughs> mga kamahindong, di ba? What, what, if, what if Satan comes to you and tempted you? Na, na. Sa kanan ng history. Pag-usap ko. Again, obedience. Meditating the word. And second, a Oreo. Yeah. Oreo brings blessings. In the last sentence, it says, then you will be prosperous and successful. Being prosperous and successful is in life always depends on the thing that we do. Right? If you're not doing anything, don't expect to be prosperous and successful. Hindi tayo ba naman? And the more practical advice that we can get is from 
the Word of God. How do you define prosperous and successful? <clears throat> huh. Can you open the Bible in Psalms chapter 1, verses 1 to 3? Psalms 1, 1 to 3. It says, Blessed is the man who does not walk in step with wicked or stand in the way that sinners take or sit in the company of mockers. Verse 2, But whose delight is in the law of the Lord and who meditates on his law day and night that person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit and season, and whose leaf does not bitter, whatever they do prospers. Very beautiful. It says, blessed, blessed is the man who does not walk on a council of the wicked, but blessed. But those who delight in the law or meditate the law day and night is like a tree planted in living water. A tree planted by water always has everything that it needs. Hindi nagkukulang. Sobra, sobra pa. A tree planted that is, a tree that is planted by the water never dries up. And a tree that is planted by the water never worries about the sun. You want to be like that plant. Planted on a living water. It says, you may not be always successful in the, ma in the, in the man's eyes, but you will always be successful in God's eyes. You know what we see a while ago in the video? That is what men standard about successful and prosperity. When you have your own car, not just an ordinary car, but a Ferrari, Lamborghini, Limousine. And you have your own house, not just a house, but a condominium right beside you is your car. You have your own parking lot and your car has own elevator. <laughs> right? That is the man's standard. But what is the God's standard when it comes to prosperity? Meron yan. In 1 Timothy chapter 6, 6 to 10. First Timothy chapter six verses six to ten. First Timothy six chapter six it says, But godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into the world and we can take nothing out of it. But if we have food and clothing, we will be content with that. Those who want to get rich fall into temptation and a trap and into many foolish and harmful desires that plunge people into destruction, into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. Some people eager for money have wandered from the faith and fears themselves with many griefs. People, having money doesn't make you an evil. But the love of money is that is another um, misinterpret verses. They said money is the root of all evil. So what they're doing, they're giving all their money, they're not working, they, they become 
poor or they stay they stay poor because money is the root of all evil but the bible says no it is the love of money right and that is prosperity godliness with contentment it says in second in timothy what does it mean makontento tayo kung ano meron ka Minsan naiinggit tayo sa kapitbahay natin, nagpagawa ng bahay, pagpagawa din ako. <laughs> ni-renovate, ni-renovate. Renovate din ako. Pinatumba ang bahay, pinatumba. Palakihan. Pata Pataasan. Right? Kahit magkabaon ba una sa utang. Okay lang. Ganda ng bahay. Wala namang ilaw. Wala pa bahay ng kuryente. <laughs> yung... Sabi niya, hindi okay na kasi earth hour, kailangan magtipid ng kuryente. Yung siya, Sarah. <laughs> People, con be content of what you have. If you have your own house, if you're living in, in, in countryside, in province, don't expect na pumunta ka ng Manila and you will have your same life. In Manila, you have your own um, lupa. Sa paso. But in, in the province, you have your lot in your backyard. If you want to cook something, you just get there. In Manila, you have to go to market. Binasana lahat. Be content. And, it, 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 and it's not we, and it's, I am not saying that it's not good to have something. I'm not saying that don't achieve more, but what I'm saying is be content. Why? If you're contented of what you have, the blessing, the money, is a bonus only for God. Bonus na lang yan. Sabi nga, if you're pinagkatiwala ka sa maliit, pagkakatiwala ka sa malaki. If God is so you that you're responsible in your 3,000 krona, God will give you 30,000 krona. Amen. If you are responsible. But for 3,000 krona, meron ka rin cell phone, meron ka camera, hanggang wala ka nang ipadala, wala ka nang savings, how you can be responsible? It's okay to have gadget. But at the end of the day, do you have savings? Ouch. But at the end of the day, are you... Can you send money to the Philippines? All. Lahat na eh. 200% pa eh. With our KK. <laughs> the Word of God give us wisdom on how we should define life. Success and prosperity is not measured by how you look. Like when God chooses David, he said in 1 Samuel 16-7, 6, 7, it says, God looks on the heart and not the outward appearance. Naka-abra trombi ka nga. Gucci, everything from head to toe. But you're not happy inside. You're not contented. You're buying 1,000 shoes. <laughs> right? And prosperity and success not measured of what I have. Wealth does not make you success. You know, a lot of people will say, "Magkaroon lang ako ng 1,000 krona. If I will have 100, 1 million krona, I will not work. I will not ever work. Ayan, di ka nga pinigyan. Di ka nga trabaho eh. Lord, just give me 1,000 krona, 1, 1 million krona, and then I will give my tithes and offering. Diyos <laughs> sa'yo. In Mark 8, 36, it says, And what do you benefit if you gain the whole world, but you lose your own soul? You have everything. There's a lot of people who have everything, but yet they are not contented. Richest people 
like the one who built Facebook. He's only 29 years old. Still is not contented on this life. A lot of people, famous people, I, uh, Amy Wainhouse, 25, 27 years old, very famous singer, and he just commits suicide. Uh, a person in a, a celebrity in Glee, a TV series, is only 26, and he commits suicide. You have everything, but what can you gain? But what is, what is your benefit if you gain the world, if you gain famous, if you gain success and, and prosperity, but you lose your own soul? May Prada ka nga. May Gucci ka nga. Pero hindi ka naman masaya. Big T rin. <laughs> In Luke 12, 15, it says, Beware. Guard against every kind of greed. Life is not measured by how much you own. You will not be less human if you are not wearing Gucci. People will not treat you less human if you are not wearing Prada. Life is not measured by how much you own. In my conclusion, we all ask God's blessing and provision, right? We always ask God, Give us success, give us prosperity, Lord. In Tagalog, pahingi noon. Pahingi noon. Hindi na Panginoon. Pahingi noon, pahingi, pahingi niyan. But did we ever give God a chance to have a real relationship with us? In the Bible, it says, Seek first the kingdom of God and all this thing shall be added unto you. But what we are doing right now? Seek first your planchahe and all your planchahe will be added unto you. <laughs> seek first your worry and all your worries shall be added unto you. It says seek first the kingdom of God. Ouch, mga <laughs> planchahe In Psalms 19, 10, the the word of the Lord is precious than gold. Than much precious, pure gold. They are sweeter than honey. Than honey from the honeycomb. If you're looking and longing for a wealth, to lang oh, makani ng dito krona, three hundred krona. You have your wealth here. If you're looking for a sweet, sweetheart, like Oreo, Bible is also sweet. If you read his word, his promises, you know, sweeter than honey, it says. Church, I pray right now that after you hear this word, you change your perspective about life. Not because we are here, we're earning money, we buy things, we go to another places. That is not the meaning of life. And I like what um, Paul says in Philippians 4, 11, 13. It says, not that, I, I, not that I was ever in need, for I have learned how to be content with whatever I have. I know how to live on almost nothing or with everything. I have learned the secret of living in every situation, whatever it is with a full stomach or empty, with plenty or little, because for I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. Paul doesn't have anything. He experienced everything and experienced nothing, but still he is contented with the Lord. This is my um, testimony. Every time I stand, I always tell people that 
I don't have anything. I'm studying. My own, I don't have a job. And I was, when I'm coming here, Lord, how can I share this if I don't have something to share on? How can I say that you are enough? Kung ako nga, I don't have any job. I'm just a full-time student. Sabi nga ni Anas, full-time power at the poor. Yes. Full-time student, full-time poor. But God, you know, give me this picture of people. I was really blessed with their lives. People who are standing here, giving their time in the ministry, giving their their own money in the ministry, how can you not be happy on that? Me, I don't have anything, but God give me contentment. And people, I am happy because you are here. You made the church, this church, possible. So I'm going, it's okay, Lord, if I don't have any job. As long as you are here, as long that I see your hand moving in my life, as long as I can eat three times a day, four times a day with rice, I'm enough. Basta <laughs> <laughs> may rice. <laughs> Tama? And I think, and I pray that you also see what life is like, 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 like that. I came to the point that I'm traveling a lot. For a year, I go to places like five times, six times, five to six country uh, a year. And I came to the point right now that I, I don't have money to travel. But does it make a difference? No. I'm happy when I'm traveling. I'm happy when I'm here. It's just traveling is a bonus from God. And I believe that prosperity and that success will come if I truly stay. Meditate the word day and night. Amen. 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 So tonight or today is about Christ being enough in ourselves. Jesus is enough and he is more than enough. If you cannot understand what I'm saying, people, let me help you to understand it. So, baby, how can I be more than enough? People, if you are in your position right now that you are running after money, position, you will not go far. Kuskos, limang beses, isang araw. Ang tanong, are you happy? Yes, nakapagpadala ka. But how about yourselves? How about yung katawan nyo? Bata pa lang kayo, sinisingil na kayo. At the age of 30, meron na kayong mga rayuma. Are you happy? Are you content? Are you contented with your life? Let's all stand up and um, sing this song and try this now. To make this a prayer today. And if you're tired of doing things in yourself, Lord, Before this is our song, Jesus is in our us.
Amen. I replace. Amen. Amen. Just bear my voice. 